Well, they say third, third time is the charm, so I'm going to try this. I keep on pulling the autofocus and it keeps on focusing it up here, but we'll see what we can do. So I've attached the wheel here. I'm going to turn this on in a minute. I won't be able to talk while I'm doing any of that, so I'm going to explain what it is I'm doing. I'm going to stop the motor at some point with the piece. Uh, it's only a single phase motor, so you can stop it quite easily. It's a bit of a pain because it means if you've got a grind or you want to really try and get some polish in there, you can't push too hard. But conversely, what it means is you can't remove too much of the material by accident and take away too much um, metal work uh, by leaning into it a bit hard. Um, so it's a little forgiving that way, certainly if when you're getting going and you're trying to learn what you're doing. When you're grinding a piece, if you move with the spin of the wheel with the piece doing that, so imagine my hand is the metalwork, and as I move in I go with it, what that does is it re removes far less material and adds more of a polish to the piece. If as that's spinning you come back up that way, that will grind away more of the piece. So just something to bear in mind as you're going and as you're working there. So I'm going to get all the gear on, we'll give this a go and see if I can get any in focus footage uh, of what goes on and then we'll take a look at the little square about that big that I'm going to grind in uh, to the piece and we can start to do a compare and contrast between that and the, each of the phases. <laughs> Hopefully you can see with very little effort, I want to do that in real time so it doesn't look like I've fudged anything, with a little bit of extra polish in there on the 80 grit, you can remove all of this uneven looking bits and pieces. We'll take a closer look over at the workbench and then we'll get on to the next grade. So here we go then, I've just done that um, 80 grit pass with the flap disc just around here and you can see already there's quite a difference. If we take a look at the work done here with the sanding desk, still an 80 grit, you get this sort of grains of the sanding desk all over the place. When you take a look at the more matte area here, that's 80 grit as well on the flap desk, you can see how it's already beginning to smooth itself down. So you can imagine doing all of this wouldn't take much more than 20-30 minutes because of this device, because of the uh, sanding disc. If I went at this with the flat disc, you're looking at about an hour and a half to get that to this level first. Because it's just so much quicker with that, you can see instantly where the work needs planishing. Tap it back out, another quick pass, and then you're ready for the flap wheel that we've seen. So what I'm going to do is do a little bit more, about two thirds of this now. I'll mark it with a pen, about two thirds more of it now with the next one which is a 120 a 120 grit so I've stepped from 80 grit to 120 grit just to help smooth that all down and we'll see how I do that in just a second now the flap wheel that I've got you can pick those up in all sorts of grits um, in fact I've used them in the past um, I just found I ended up preferring this sort of uh, way of doing things. So what I do is you get a linen mop, it costs a couple of pound, and you can get cement or adhesive grits uh, of all sorts from sort of 60 to about 300, 
but I tend to settle on this one for about a 150. And what you do is you just stick it on the mop, it goes hard, and then you just prepare the mop by giving it a few hits, loosen it up, break it down a bit. You don't have to do this, but I find it gets shot in the face less um, by all of the bits and pieces that are flying off. Just break it down so it cleans your anvil nice. So there you go. Get that onto the um, bench grinder, same as I saw, showed you earlier, and then give it a gentle pass. I would suggest take a bit of metal to it first, just to take all these loose lumps off, because these will fly up and hit you in the face, and they can really catch you by surprise if you're not ready for it. And some decent eye protection and so on. We'll get that on, give it a spin, give it a clean, and then um, get on to the bit of metal work. Now, a point that's worth making here is, I, personally, I don't think the secrets to each of these are in the types of grip. At the end of the day, you're going to start on a low grip, like a 60 or an 80 or 100, and you're going to make your way up to a polishing mop of some description. And you just got to do the stages in between that get you from A to B. I know a couple of folk that are really meticulous with their polishing. They come up with fantastic finishes. Um, probably two, possibly even too good. They're, they're, they're just flawless. Um, I tend to wear on the other side. I try to remove all of my modern grip marks, but I'm not too bothered if it's not an entirely flawless finish because I don't see that in the originals. I, I, or rather, I see that in the originals. They don't seem to have been too fussed about flawless pieces in most of their work. So don't get too hung up on the grits. The bit that's important is that each section each grit removes the marks of the previous grit. By that I mean this 150 grit here has got to remove all of the 80 grit marks from there, any scratches that have been made by the 80 grit. If they don't, when you get to the polishing, you will leave them in there. You can't remove them later. You have to get the marks of each previous phase out before you move on to the next phase. So even here, the sort of previous phase, if there was to be one here, is the planish from the hammer. You need to make sure the surface is smooth, that it's not rippled in any way. Then you can grit it, then you can smooth that out a bit, and then you can smooth it a bit more. And in this instance, I'm going for a satin, a satin finish. So I'm just going to go from the 150 grit here, which I've just this minute done, you saw me do there. I'm going to go from that onto a grey polishing compound, and I'll show you about those in just a sec before we continue. Now, polishing grits and polishing compounds, that sort of thing, polishing soaps, they tend to come in large bars like this. I'll put all the links to everything I buy down below, but you have to go hunting from your, your own local area, and they tend to come in things like this. And all you do, very straightforward, is you buy a linen mop. This was similar to the one I showed you before, which is over here. So it was like that. The only difference between this one and that one is that this one's been stitched, so you don't get all this loose leaf. I don't think it's too much of a problem. It's just what I bought at the time, to be honest. And what you do when this is spinning is you add a bit of the, the compound that's on there. Now I've got the grey compound, a white if I'm trying to go shinier, and a blue if I want to get mirrored. Uh, but in this instance, I'm going to stop at the grey, but you'll get the principle easy and easily enough. 
So I'll get this attached, we'll get a bit of the um, polishing soap or the polishing compound onto the um, wheel, we'll give that bit a go and then you can have a look at the differences. And then we've got our 80 grit, well we've got our planish I suppose, our 80 grit sanding disc, the flat wheel, we'll see it getting smoother and smoother as we're going, the 150 grit, and we've just put the polishing compound on there, it leaves this black residue. Now if you're swift you can get this uh, residue off relatively painlessly uh, with a rub, but if you leave it for a little while like I have with this one, uh, just to show you, what you need to do is get a bit of uh, oil, a bit of 3-in-1 duck oil, whatever it is, give it a spray, And then just give it a wipe. With the oiliest rag you have in the workshop. So I'll just go and get a clean rag and uh, we'll, we'll revisit that bit. These are another handy hint. You can get them from, um, oh, I don't know, what you, just, uh, the sanitary supplies, the toiletries and stuff like that. Quite a cheap way of getting a long length of linen. And those sort of surface floors. There we go, get a nice clean bit. We'll give that a respray. And hopefully. The camera is picking up. Yes, it is. There you go. I can see the bands. I won't move anything. Uh, you can see the different bands of finish. And if you want this, I've not done a particularly good job here. You can see up here it's still um, got the sanding grit there. But just here is a nice smooth bit where you can really make out uh, the differences in the banding there. So you can see it's not that complicated. And if you wanted to go any further, you just get the white polishing compound or the next one on from your supplier, whatever colour it is they suggest. I don't know if these are uniform colours, but you get the next one on and you do that. And then if you want to go even further, you can do the whole surface in the blue and the, and the jeweler's rouge, whatever it is, and you can get the whole thing um, absolutely uh, spotless if that's what you wish. Um, so you can see it's pretty straightforward. You don't need a ton of equipment. All that does is make it a bit less painless and a bit faster for you. You just need to take your time and you can get a good finish uh, that would have um, thrilled the cockles of any medieval knight, I'm sure. So uh, there you go. So we've got from planishing, sanding disc, flap wheel, 150 grit, polishing mop. I'll stick the links to all the places I go to to get the stuff uh, in the UK and um, yeah, wish you nothing but luck. And I hope you enjoy polishing more than I do. Uh, so take care and we'll see you sometime in the next video.